There have been many different types of Zelda challenge runs done in the history of the series. From the three heart challenge to randomizers, we've seen about everything. But I don't think there has been a challenge quite like this. What I'm dubbing the Zelda Scavenger Hunt Challenge. The mission? I have to locate 10 items amongst the entire Zelda series from a list provided by my Discord members and to do it as fast as possible. I must get the player character link in the vicinity of all 10 items. I say vicinity as any of the items can be something completely random in the game, something that's not even collectible such as a background decoration. The items or things are also non-specific so I can choose which Zelda game is the fastest to locate said item. For example, if one item is a school desk, I could try and find it in any of the Zelda games. You could find one in games such as Wind Waker or Skyward Sword, but one game might be faster than the others to get to that point where you can access it. I say get to that point because any Zelda game I decide to play as part of this challenge, I have to start a new playthrough. So if I know I can find an item earlier in the game, then it's usually best to pick that one. I will be allowed to switch to a different game at any time, and if I switch back to a game I already started for this challenge, I will be allowed to continue that playthrough. This challenge will really test how much I really know the surroundings and story beats of each Zelda game. And if you think you know a faster way of getting all the items you're about to see on this list, then make sure to let me know in the comments. Now let's begin. At the start of the challenge, it was time to reveal the list of items I needed to find. In order to prevent me from pre-planning anything, I had no knowledge of anything on the list until looking at it here. The items and or things for this challenge are the following. Saw, cow, shark, frog, painting, egg, spider, croissant, broom, and chicken. Okay. I then allowed myself a minute to order the items in what I thought was the most efficient order. Once I started the challenge, I was locked into finding the items in that exact order. This was the order I decided to go with, which means we had the saw to find first. Now, when I first realized that I had to find a saw, my mind immediately went to Ocarina of Time, because the Big Goron Sword quest actually has you collect a saw. The problem is that you have to go pretty deep into the game to get to that point. I was not about to play through half of the game just to get to the first item. But another game came to mind shortly after that I knew would be much easier. A Link to the Past. I was pretty confident we could find one just after the tutorial section. Booting up the game, I played through the beginning section as normal. A very sloppy normal. I quickly found Zelda and after not much time, we escaped the castle. After mashing through some dialogue and grabbing a heart container that I probably won't need, it was time to go exploring. I knew somewhere in the northwest part of the map there were two lumberjack gentlemen that I needed to find. After getting lost for a moment, I was able to locate them, sure enough, with a giant saw in the midst of taking down a tree. Item number one, down. The next game was one that I knew I was going to be able to accomplish a lot on this list with, none other than Ocarina of Time. If there is a game I'm most familiar with in Zelda, it's Ocarina of Time. So I decided to play to my strengths. Many of the items on this scavenger hunt list were ones that I knew I would immediately be able to find in OOT, which is why I set the items up in a very advantageous order. It was all about getting to the shark in the Lake Hylia laboratory of all things. I figured if I could progress to the Zora scale, there was a good chance I could dive deep enough to see the shark, but I wasn't 100% sure. So I guess my backup plan would be Wind Waker? I hope it doesn't come to that, but it's good we at least have a backup plan. I also knew that there were a couple items which would eventually be a problem. Where the heck was I going to find a croissant in a Zelda game? So after playing through the all too familiar intro for Ocarina of Time, it was time to enter the game's first dungeon, the Great Deku Tree. You'll notice that it is not long at all before I pass a Skulltula, which is a spider. To make this maybe a tiny bit more difficult, I decided to only count a gold Skulltula just because it looks more like a traditional spider, but I was going to run into both of these anyway just normally playing through the dungeon, so it doesn't really affect my full runtime anyway. 
After falling through the web in the center of the dungeon, I was able to immediately spot the spider and check off item number two. After not too much trouble, I made it to the boss Goma, which I failed to beat in one cycle cause I'm a little rusty at the game. After having to mash through our favorite Owl Friends dialogue, we had our next objective in sight, an egg. Anyone who's played OOT knows that before visiting Zelda after the first dungeon, you have to collect an egg to wake up Talon. So it was off to Hyrule Castle, but it was very important to make it across Hyrule Field before nightfall when the gate closes. You waste a bunch of time waiting outside if you don't make it. If you try to walk normally, you probably won't get there in time. So I made sure to do the fast method of backwalking, and I pretty much made it just in time. So now that I was in Castle Town, I decided at the cost of some time to look around and see if there was a broom anywhere. Although it wouldn't technically count at this time since I have to find each thing in order, it would be good to have knowledge of where one is, so I could come back later. Unfortunately though, I didn't find one. I did spot a chicken, but again, I have to get everything in order. So this one didn't count. After waiting for nightfall at Hyrule Castle and reloading the area, Malin was now there to give us our egg, but not before this stupid owl had to blabber on. But then we did collect our egg from Malon to complete item number three. Now I wouldn't have to wait much longer for our next item since our egg will of course be hatching soon. I made my way up to the castle and hopped over the gate just as our egg hatched into a chicken. I guess I got a little overzealous about bringing out the chicken to get credit and got myself caught by the guards. Outside the gates I brought out the chicken to check item number 4 off of our list. After meeting Zelda and getting our letter and lullaby which we need to progress, our next objective was a cow. Now there is quite a few cows in the game so I wasn't too worried about finding one. The main thing I was keeping in mind was the frog and shark which if all went to plan I'd be getting around the Zora's domain section which means I needed to get bombs first. As I made my way to Kakariko village, I had a vague memory of a cow that was in one of the grottos nearby. I figured this would be faster than having to stop at Lon Lon Ranch where I knew for sure there was one. After failing a few times to get over this fence, I finally made it over to realize I was completely wrong and there is no cow in this grotto. I knew there was one in the grotto above Goron City, but I decided to explore the town a little bit to scout for a possible painting or broom that I could come and get later. As I was heading right to Impa's house, I suddenly remembered. Wait, there's a cow in here. There's a cow in here. After spotting a cow and checking item number 5 off of our hunt, I double checked these low res textures of what I assume are either a bucket and mop or maybe butter churners. It would make sense given that there's a cow there, but to me these things were clearly not brooms which we needed. Interestingly though I found out after the fact that if I had played the 3DS version, there actually is a broom in this exact house. Good to know if I end up doing another run that the 3DS version is probably going to have a lot more random items laying around. Our next mission was to get bombs so that we could access Zora's River where we can find our frog. So I went to Goron City and opened up this nice shortcut with the only downside being that I have to talk to this owl again. I made my way to Saria to get her song, then headed back to Darunia to play it and have him dance along. From there, it was on to Dodongo's Cavern. I'll skip most of this as it plays exactly how you would expect, but we eventually got our bombs which is the only thing we needed here. I decided to play through the rest of the dungeon anyway, even though it wasn't necessary to get what I needed, there wasn't much left of the dungeon to complete, and on the off chance I needed to come back to OOT, I would have the progress. So with King Dodongo defeated and bombs in our inventory, it was time to head to Zora's River. After yet another owl encounter, I bombed through the rocks and only a short way up the river was our frog friend. You could see him clearly in the water so I didn't even need to call him up on the log, so item number 6 complete. Now it was time for the main event of OOT, getting the Zora scale and seeing if we can get a visual on that laboratory shark. Inside Zora's domain it was simply a quick trip up to the top of the waterfall to play the rupee minigame. After no trouble at all, we were able to collect our prize. As I made my way back up to collect the scale, I got a little overzealous with the dialogue and accidentally triggered the minigame for a second time. Luckily, I could swiftly ignore it and swim straight to the door to Lake Hylia. 
I was finally ready to see if my master plan would work. I imagine most people usually see the shark once they have the iron boots, but I was hoping that the blue scale would be just enough to see it. Inside the laboratory, I first decided to look around a bit to scout any additional objects in the room, and sure enough there is a saw in here. Luckily we don't need it anymore, but I guess it's good to know for the future. It's in the 3DS version too if you were wondering. Now for the moment of truth, could we dive deep enough as Child Link to get a visual on the shark? My first dive you could just barely see the shark, but I wanted to get the best possible visual that I could for this. I found that if you hold Z while diving, the camera will actually zoom in closer, so after a few tries, we are able to get a nice look at our shark friend which completes item number 7, leaving only 3 left to go. So our next objective is a painting. And with OOT being the game I knew the most, my first thought was of course the boss room of the forest temple. That however would take quite a bit of time. I'd not only have to beat basically 2 dungeons, but I'd also have to go through quite a number of cutscenes. So I decided to finally switch games after a very fruitful haul of objectives in OOT. What better game to switch to to find a painting than a game very much associated with paintings, A Link Between Worlds. Booting up the game, I recalled that pretty early on we would be able to see some paintings in Hyrule Castle. So after trying to deliver a sword and seeing some panic over by the sanctuary, I made my way through the underground entrance. After a couple puzzle rooms, I had made my way into the sanctuary and encountered Yuga. During the cutscene, Yuga turns Cerise into a painting, and you might be thinking, boom, objective cleared, right then and there. Well, I decided first, I wasn't going to count anything seen in a cutscene for this challenge, and second, Yuga used magic to make this thing. It's clearly not an authentic painting, right? We literally see it happen. So that doesn't count in my opinion. After being attacked by Yuga, we are woken up by Ravio, and I quickly head to Hyrule Castle. To talk to Zelda, we have to first look at, you guessed it, paintings, completing objective number 8. With our next objective being a broom, I still wasn't 100% sure where I was going to find one. The only broom I could think of off the top of my head was in Tears of the Kingdom. A woman comes to Zelda's house to sweep, but it would take a long time just to even get through the tutorial and then we'd have to travel all the way to Hateno Village. I figured instead I'd continue with the link between worlds in hopes that I could come across one. So I finished reading the stories that coincide with the paintings and then talked to Zelda. After that I was free to explore and I figured if I was going to find a broom anywhere, it was probably going to be Kakariko Village. In the village I figured I'd check every building and thought there would surely be a broom somewhere. I first checked the milk bar and wouldn't you know there is a broom right there in the top corner. Only problem was, I didn't notice it. Somehow it completely went unnoticed by me. Was this my only chance or would I be able to find it somewhere else? Luckily in the next building I checked there was yet another broom right there, completely unmissable. So objective number 9 was off of our list. Now it all comes down to this. A croissant. What game am I going to find this in? Again, my mind went to Tears of the Kingdom. I know you could make things like bread, pizza, and apple pie, so maybe a croissant was possible. But I decided against it. My thinking was I could always go to Tears of the Kingdom as a last resort, because it's such a major time sink. It felt more advantageous to play some of the 2D games because it's much faster to get to either a castle town or a Kakariko village where you could find out pretty quickly if there was something like a bakery or not. Then I could move on to the next game if I needed to. I decided to start with Minish Cap. I had played Minish Cap less than a year ago and I vaguely remember there being a bakery. I knew at the very least the castle town was quite elaborate so it felt like there was a good chance I might be able to find a croissant. Getting started in Minish Cap, I met up with Zelda and headed into Castletown. In this section of the game, you are pretty confined in what you can do and basically you have to keep talking to Zelda to move things along. After not much time though, I caught a glimpse of hope. I could see one of the buildings clearly indicating that it was a bakery. The only problem was I couldn't get inside yet. All of the shopkeepers were blocking the entrance during the tutorial. So I had no choice but to continue on and leave the bakery behind for now. So we get our shield, see some questionable dialogue, 
and see Zelda get turned to stone. When Link wakes up, he gets his marching orders to visit the Minish Village, but of course I had other plans. I darted out of Hyrule Castle and headed straight back to Castletown, only to find the entrance blocked. Okay, fine, we can just go to another entrance. Yep, that one's blocked too. So unfortunately, that means I had to play through a whole dungeon just to get back into Castletown. So it was off to Deepwood Shrine. Although this was a setback, I was still very happy to at least identify that there was a bakery in Minish Cap. I was just hoping we would find our flaky friend inside. Picking up our companion Ezlo along the way, I headed into Minish Village and entered the dungeon. I played through this dungeon numerous times so it wasn't too much trouble to get to the boss Chew and make pretty quick work of it. With that out of the way, I had one more quick pit stop. As Tiny Link, I talked to the Minish dude to get the bombs we needed to get by the roadblock in Castletown, and then I was finally able to make it past the barrier. And there I was, finally back in Castletown. It was finally time to... oh, I have to learn how to fuse kinstones first. When that was finally out of the way, I walked straight to the bakery and inside, there it was. A soft, flaky, delicious croissant, completing item number 10 and concluding our challenge in just over two and a half hours. I'd like to thank all my Discord members who helped out with this challenge and let me know if you want to see more videos like this one.